Welcome to another Friday Night Restoration. Really this is part two, but part one got pretty long-winded with my discussion of what types of capacitors to use and where you can obtain them, so I thought I would break off part two where I'm going to do the meat of the restoration. So here is the radio. It's a little Emerson 540A, sometimes called an Emersonette. I've already pulled the chassis and I removed the built-in internal antenna. It makes it a little bit easier to work on. Over here, it's just your typical built-in loop antenna. I've been poking around under the chassis a little bit. The first thing that caught my attention was this resistor that's fried and charred and this capacitor that's blown an end out. I studied the schematic for a while and traced out the wiring and I found out that the resistor that's completely fried is this 1K resistor here. In the parts list they call that a filter resistor and it should be 1 watt. So if we follow the flow here Here's the rectifier tube, so here's our positive voltage supply for the radio. One filter cap here. We go up and around through the output transformer down through that 1K, and there is the other filter cap. So I would not be surprised at all if this cap shorted out and took out that resistor. And obviously this cap has also got some issues here because the one end is blown out. I also noticed that this 15 ohm resistor is measuring about four times higher than it should be, so I'm going to replace that. This 10 ohm guy isn't too bad, it's a little bit high, but not, uh, not uh, horrible. So these three resistors are all in the power supply. I got the 10 ohm here that's in with the pilot light, and the 15 ohm here feeds the plate, and then there's the 1K over here for the power supply pie filter. It's very typical in these All-American 5 radios to have issues with the power supply. Often these electrolytics go bad and start causing all kinds of havoc. Especially because they tended to use cheap electrolytics. This thing looks like a mess. I can see the bottoms bulging out here. It's actually even just a, a paper cylinder. I don't think it's even... that's definitely not metal. Dual section 30 and 50, both rated 150 volts. I've pulled out a couple caps to replace it with. I got a 33 microfarad rated for 200 volts and a 47 rated for 250. I like to go, say, at least 50% high on the voltage when I replace caps. The 47, sure, it's a little bit less than 50, but not too much to make it. And, uh, a problem. Plus, 30 I'm replacing with 33, so I'm replacing an 80 total microfarad capacitance capacitor with another 80 microfarad combination, so that should be just fine. Have not tested the tubes yet, but that will be coming up. We have five of them all together. As I said, it's an All American 5. Let's check the pilot light, too. Oh, <laughs> I just noticed that it's completely broken loose. I'm not sure where it's supposed to go. A little studying on that. It's like maybe it could fit in up here. Here's the dial. So imagine well, maybe it goes okay, I see. That's not <laughs> just as simple as that. Alright, that's cool. I hope the audio output transformer is good. I'll have to measure that. Tubes, I don't know. It's actually an Emerson. Interesting. There's an RCA. Tubes flying everywhere. That's yeah, also an Emerson. A G and a tongue sole. So no doubt this radio has been serviced. I also noticed that, that 1K resistor that's fried is actually a replacement. Itself, so the repair attempt appear, appears to uh, have failed. You can tell that because it was 
there was uh, an old lead that was cut off and it was wrapped around one end of this with a curly cue and then soldered in place. So we know we want to replace at least two if not all three of these resistors and of course the capacitors. I'll start by cutting these two out of the way which should allow me some free space so I can get in any other components that might be obscured. Electrolytic feeds in right where the IF ca uh, can is. There's actual wires that come out of this. It's, it's held in with this clamp. It's not a twist lock, so it'd be easy enough to get that out of there. And then those wires run under here somewhere, so... So this is held in by a clip and some short wires. I'm hoping these wires are long enough that I can unmount this IF can and carefully bend it out of the way so I can get at the stuff that's under here. For sure I can see three paper, four paper caps. One, two, three, four. And there might be a fifth underneath this guy. So I'll just have to, because they're so, I'm so space constrained, I'll have to cut these parts out to get to the furthest back parts and just have to replace them and build my way back forward. I'm trying to remember where these parts that I have to cut out first were connected. Of course, I've taken some reference photos and I can refer back to the schematic if needed. I just replaced this nasty old 1K cat. I just replaced this nasty old 1K resistor with this guy here and the 15 ohm with one up here. Despite their size, these are actually 2 watt resistors. And I just clipped off the lead of this blown out cap. So you can see what's underneath there. So, yeah, yeah, two more paper caps. One there, one there. And this guy. Let's clip this one out too. And another <laughs> very nasty looking capacitor in here. So, uh, yeah, this, this seems, this radio I saw a lot of use, or at least it was in a very warm environment, to melt all this wax out of the caps. So I'll keep these two folded out of the way, and I'll clip this guy out, and as I said, I'll work from the back forward, and replace that guy, then that, then that, and see about relocating this IF transformer. I carefully unsoldered the connections to the IF canning, extricated it, and while doing so I noticed something kind of interesting. You can see the remains of old lugs on these leads, which sure indicates to me that this is actually a replacement. Which is probably a good thing because you can see the capacitors inside, so I don't think I'm going to have any issue with bad mica caps in this IF can. And now, with that out of the way, I can really get down in there. So I bent these three out of the way, and now bam, 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 I can replace these three paper caps. And here are the wires going to that electrolytic that I want to replace. I wasn't able to complete the restoration of Friday night, so this will be more of a weekend project. I just finished recapping underneath the chassis and replaced pretty much all the resistors. Only one or two were still within tolerance. These new caps are much smaller than the original, so it opened up a lot of room under here. Still need to reinstall the IF can. It goes in like so. And here's where the other IF can is up on top. And uh, the electrolytics, I just kind of crudely put them in up here. The old one wasn't worth restuffing. This thing is really nasty. I'm not even sure if it's the original. It might be a replacement. Because it was held in by uh, 
strap of brass that was wrapped around and soldered on here so I'm not sure if that was the original construction or not uh, these are in there pretty pretty securely so I'm not too concerned about it so let's see what's left uh, well like I said I have to reinstall the IF can and I'll test the tubes and uh, I think oh and I'll have to reattach the antenna and then uh, I'll try firing it up I just finished reinstalling the IF can and I did test all the tubes the 50B5 audio output tube was completely fried filament was blown open so I replaced that the rest of the tubes uh, tested pretty good so I replaced or put them back in the set rather and uh, the tube shields when I first opened this radio there was one here one here and one on the 50B5 audio output tube which seems a little bit odd to me so I put it over here on the 12BA6. Now, potentially any one of these could have a shield because they all have the same collar around the base. But uh, I don't really think you need to put a shield on the output tube. And that tube gets pretty toasty. So I want to allow it ventilation. Now, if there's any kind of weird oscillations or something in the set, I can always try putting a shield back over there. Now, one thing I also just did was I cut the power cord off. It's in okay shape, although it got twisted up quite a bit over the years, and the insulation was starting to break off right here. But the real reason I want to replace it is because it's an unpolarized plug. And this is a true hot chassis set. One side of that power cord goes right to the chassis. So by using a polarized plug in which one of the uh, spade terminals there is larger than the other that way I know which is the hot and which is the neutral and I can have the neutral go to the chassis and I can route the hot to the switch still kind of a dangerous thing to be poking around with um, without an isolation transformer but far safer to have the chassis going to neutral than to hot I removed the old power cord, installed the new one, including a rubber strain relief here, and I got the neutral going to the chassis. Hot side goes through the switch and through a fuse. I used a half amp fuse. I think that'll be alright, we'll find out. It suddenly draws about 30 watts, so uh, significantly less than half an amp. There may be a little surge when it starts up, which could blow the fuse, but I don't think so. Between the pilot light and series resistance on the uh, AC inputs there, uh, I don't think it'll be too much of a surge. Alright, so before I, e I even bother looking at the antenna, I want to do a couple more tests. One basic one is to just... Stick in the ohm meter across the AC plug. And with the set turned off, we should have infinite resistance, and we do. And if I turn the set on, it should be greater than zero, but less than infinity. And 120 ohms. Alright, so I just want to make sure there wasn't a dead short when I turned it on. Alright, so next up, I'll use an isolation transformer and a dim bulb setup, and let's see if these tubes light up. Okay, here we go. I've got my voltmeter across the main DC supply. Should be around 120 volts DC or thereabouts. Pilot lights lit up. Tubes are all glowing. Obviously the fuse hasn't burned out. Voltage reading is really weird though. I was 
expecting a significant positive voltage, but instead I got a slightly negative voltage. To double check my wiring on that rectifier and uh, filter caps. I didn't find anything obviously miswired, so I was thinking maybe it's just a dirty tube socket or dirty tube pin, so did a little cleaning. So let's see if that works any better now. There we go. That bit just didn't wait long enough before. Hmm, oh, some noise coming out of the speaker. It's a good sign. I don't have an antenna hooked up, but maybe I can. Pick up a little something even without it. Not really. Yeah, cool. I'm just holding my hand just near the antenna input. Got that antenna. Let's see how it works with that. I've reattached the internal antenna, so let's give this another try. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's much better. So there's one end of the dial. Where I said, why do Adam and Eve have names? That sounds really good. Nice clear sound. It started many, many months ago. And what day do they pick? What day do you think they pick? What would you protection for the too old. Too high. The people they're ministering to. Could we also ask you? Cool. It was a real pain to work on that tight chassis underneath, but uh, this works quite well. It doesn't appear to be getting too ridiculously hot. Of course, the 50B5 output tube is hot, and the rectifier too, but overall it doesn't seem to be too toasty. Of course, I haven't had it running that long either. Alright, so put that to the side for, for a moment. and. 
clean up this cabinet a little bit and put this back together. I was able to remove the clear plastic dial from the radio by popping out these little metal rivets so I can try to carefully clean that. It makes it easier to work on the cabinet too. I just did one pass with the Novus number two. It's better but I think it still needs at least one more pass. But before I do that, I think I better glue up this crack so it doesn't get any worse. I'm going to use some super glue. I'll apply it carefully from the back side and immediately wipe up any excess that might leak through this side. And clamp it down. It won't be perfect, but uh, I don't think it'll be too noticeable. After the Novus number two, I went over the cabinet with some Oz cream polish, and I think it's looking pretty nice. Here it is all back together and powered up. Dial lights, not the greatest. It's not so much that it's dim, it's just that the weird angle they have it doesn't illuminate the dial too well. Well, sounds all right. I thought about doing an alignment, but it's playing so well, I didn't want to bother with it. Of course, this being Sunday, it's loaded with sports. Right now in the AM band. But I got my own transmitter fired up, so... With Carl. Should do some classical music. Um, no, I don't think that's my transmitter. And there's that. Where is that? That's Radio Disney, I think. Oh, that's my transmitter. So it took longer than I expected, but uh, it's playing better than I expected, so all in all, I'd say it was a successful project. I hope you guys enjoyed these couple videos on restoring an Emerson 540A.